So let's talk a bit more about what these healthcare workers are going through with Dr. Melanie Joannis. She's a psychologist in Ottawa, and some of her patients also work in healthcare. And Dr. Joannis, we heard Amanda there mention compassion fatigue, literally mm -hmm. holding her patients' hands until the moment they die. That, I mean, it's, it's striking that what has probably drawn these folks to care for other people in the first place is what is draining them. That feels like a real yeah. crisis. Yeah, it's what we call the cost of caring, right? It's um, it's something that we're seeing that I think we need to differentiate from burning out, which burnout can tend to happen when there is a high work uh, stress level, high demands and very low resources or support, which healthcare workers have to go through and deal with. But compassion fatigue has much more to do with, you know, being exposed repeatedly to people who are suffering, who are not doing well, and the emotional toll that that can have on the worker, which unfortunately what tends to happen as they tend to disconnect from their own selves and not be able to be as empathic, let's say, with others, which and, is the unfortunate part. Right. And, and you wrote, I understand, a guide for healthcare workers last year on, on taking care of their mental health. So, so tell me, how do you help someone who is in such a taxing position as that? Yeah, one of the first key is to really be able to recognize that this is happening to you because healthcare workers have been really taught to just kind of dismiss any types of feelings that they have and just go for it. And, you know, the self-sacrifice is very high in healthcare workers. And we really want to work with them in terms of identifying how are you doing, right? You're asking everyone else how they're doing in a day, but how are you doing and identifying where, where you're struggling and being able to not necessarily feel ashamed of that, but just recognize that and turn that compassion inwards and say it's okay if you're struggling it's okay if you're having a bad day and uh, how can we help support you and there's different strategies that they can find uh, to do that but the first piece is really identifying it and being able to recognize that they're allowed to struggle they're superheroes but they can struggle yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely and and I'm curious to know just before I let you go what you think the takeaway should be for the general public from what we've just heard I think it's it's try to keep uh, them in our minds, right? Because I think it, the toll the pandemic is having such a toll on all of us, and we're all tired of it, and we all you know want this to end. But to really be mindful that our actions, our decision making process is really going to impact how these people, um, you know, their everyday lives and how well they can they can cope with it. And I think it's really important to keep that on our radar. That I you know I, I come up in the morning and when I you know, complain about my day. I recall, you know, at least I'm not in an ICU with five pounds of PPE on myself and trying to save someone's lives. Like, that's a lot uh, mm -hmm. to cope with. And I'm really grateful for the healthcare workers. And I think that's what we need to, to focus on here. We hear you loud and clear. Uh, Dr. Joannis, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.